Now that we know we have this contraption in the barn, we really might not want to sell this house. Hey, now that we're done with the important stuff, maybe we can take a crack at these. Leo Ronan. But Tyler being trans was never an issue for her. But she never communicated it properly. Oh no. She had so much going on. The whole not being able to put food on the table, all these stressors. You want to look at that one? The very old beaver's repair list. That's the story where the princess's house gets damaged by a storm and the animals help her fix it. Yeah. What did they do to fix it again? Well, we gotta read it to find out. The beaver fixes the house. It shook the shingles on the roof. They got the beaver to ram the thing, right? The beam. Because the old bear was not good enough. <laughs> the roof? Shingles off the roof, planks off the wall, and even bent a post upon which the house stood. Shingles on the roof. Huh, she fixed the roof shingles. She fixed the broken window. And even the beam on which the house stood. She slapped the post with her tail to right it. Oh, planks off the wall, sorry. Not the window. Actually, I'm not sure. She fixed the planks that- All right! Damn. That must have been rough on Eddie. Yeah, he, um... He doesn't really like to talk about her. Dear Marianne, You cover your ears every time I try to have this conversation with you, so I thought I'd have a better chance doing this in a letter. I know you don't like saying goodbye, so I'll keep my melancholic rambling short and sweet. I want to thank you, with all of my heart, for taking care of me these past few months. I can't even imagine how exhausting it must have been for you to look after a sick old lady when you also have two small children at home. I know you want me to keep fighting this disease and hoping for recovery, but it's always been a great strength of mine to know when it's time to let go. And that time has come. I'd like to ask you for one last favor. Please take care of Eddie after I'm gone. My poor boy puts on a brave front ever since his father died, but I know he's in pain. I would be so much more at peace knowing he still has family. Maybe he could teach the kids how to fish? He loves spending time with them. Thank you for the warmth and peace you brought to my life. Give the kids a kiss for me, will you? Carol. Oh. And the fact that Eddie was able to become a father again with Allison. Eddie has a lot of his own pain too, and it's really sad because looking at this, Carol could have never imagined that this would be what happened in the future. The Crafty Goblins' is good deeds. The Crafty Goblins' good deeds. Of course. The goblins had to help out the creatures of the forest to pay off their debt to the pelican. Uh, well, what did they do? You know, I don't really remember. Crafty Goblins' good deeds. All of them are about tricking people, right? <laughs> Wait, which one is, uh, which one is the Crafty Goblins' good deeds? Hey, I don't think I've read this story before. I don't remember it. The Pelican forgives the goblins. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, there lived a pair of crafty goblins in a cave below a big wooden house. They lived with a wise princess who shared as much food with them as she was able, but it was never quite enough. This left the goblins hungry, very hungry, always hungry. Yeah, I don't remember this. One day, as they were out foraging for food, the pious pelican landed on a rock and dumped the smorgasbord from her beak, which the goblins knew was magic and never emptied. They were king crabs in red, blue, gold, and scarlet, veiny blue shrimp, pink shelled scallops, oblong brown clams, purple spiny urchins, and even one prickly red sea cucumber. The food just kept coming. They watched as the pelican ate one clam and took a nap. Do you think she would mind if we just took a little? Asked the goblin to the other. Her beak never empties. She won't possibly miss a couple of crabs, said the second. Licking her lips. They were agreed, and so they crept over, filched some crabs, and ran. 
The goblins scarfed the crabs, but when they finished, they found that they were still hungry. She won't miss a handful of shrimp, said one goblin to the other. The goblins scarfed the shrimp, but when they finished, they found that they were still hungry. Maybe also a few scallops, said one goblin to the other. The goblins scarfed the scallops, but when they were finished, they found that they were still hungry. So they went back for clams, and then urchins, and then finally, even the sea cucumber. Finally, they were not hungry, but there was also nothing left. Just then, the pelican woke up. What happened to my food? she asked. Unable to lie about it, the goblins confessed their crime. The pelican was dismayed, but she was a charitable-hearted bird, and she could tell the crafty goblins were growing little creatures. Goblins, said the pious pelican, I will share my food with you, but you must, in return, follow my example and be as generous with others as I am with you. Take that to heart, and I will have considered your debt paid. But we have nothing to give, said the goblins. You have your nimble hands and your crafty brains and your loving hearts, said the pelican. The crafty goblins realized how much they had to give, and for the rest of the day, they looked for ways to help the other creatures of the forest. They found the stalwart moose struggling with an itchy, hard-to-reach spot on his back, and so they climbed up and gave it a good scratching. Next, they helped the old bear, who could not get the honey out of a narrow beehive. They climbed up to the top of a tree with a hive, and then dropped it, cracking it open. Finally, they found the princess, crying over a loss she would not speak about. Hmm so they wrapped their little arms around her in a great big hug and stayed until she felt better. There we go. The moose, the bear, and the princess. When they were done, they returned to the pious pelican. Did it feel good being as generous as I am? Asked the pelican. It did, said the goblins. I'm glad, said the pelican. We all have problems that we can't solve on our own, but if everyone goes about with generosity in their hearts, then there is always someone on hand to help. But we almost commit to do so, or there may be no one there to help you when you need it. This made sense to the goblins, and they thanked the pious pelican for her food and the lesson. Of course, by this time, they were hungry again, and that remained an ongoing problem until the day the stalwart moose taught them to fish, but that is another story. And that is how the pious pelican forgave the crafty goblins and how she taught them charity. Ah, because the picture here is this picture in the middle. So the bear? He broke open the beehive for the bear. They hugged the princess when she was crying. They gave the stalwart moose a good scratch on the back. There we go. Nailed it. Our lives would have been so different if their friendship hadn't gone to shit. The Pelican Crossing is a specialty gift boutique located near the Oshi Glacier catering to Gastineau Channel tourists as well as Delos Crossing locals. We specialize in an assortment of high-quality products from home accessories, handmade souvenirs, to personalized apparel, and locally made art. The Pelican Crossing will be the first store to act as a relay between the buzzing arts and craft scene and customers. In addition to a wide array of novelty handcrafted products, the consumer will enjoy friendly and knowledgeable customer service from Vecchi store co-owner Tessa Vecchi and up-and-coming artist Marianne Ronan. This business plan is prepared to obtain financing in the amount of 20000 to purchase inventory, and to help cover expenses in the first year of operations. In year one, the Pelican Crossing plans to break even, and in year two, we plan to generate a moderate profit. I'm gonna have to have some numbers, man. If I were the person deciding whether or not to give you a loan, I wouldn't give you one based on this. Yeah, executive summary. Working on the executive summary part of our business plan, what do you think, Tessa? Oh, man. Man. What could have been? Things that could have been. The old bear's gift for the princess. The old bear's gifts for the princess. I'm totally blanking on that story. What did he give her again? Why don't we open up the book and check? Good idea. Good idea. The bear and the princess. Do, 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 do. The bear saved the princess from the wolf. Gifts. A fresh caught salmon, a handful of ripe berries, a newly bloomed bluebell. Salmon. 
Fresh caught salmon? Some roses, maybe? No. Actually, I'm not sure. A newly bloomed bluebell? Yes. And then what was the last one? Hazelnuts. Maybe not. Oh! Actually, I'm not sure. A newly bloomed bluebell? A handful of ripe berries? Nice. Man, he had it bad. Just couldn't let go. Sorry for the note under the door, like a prison inmate. You okay? I stopped by and rang a couple of times this week, but you didn't answer. I could see the light in the hayloft, so I figured you were in, but didn't want to talk. I hope I didn't ruin everything. I know I probably came on kind of strong, but the thing is, I don't know how to talk to a woman like you. You are strong and kind and you know so much, it's hard for me to know how to keep up. I guess all that went to my head. But I want you to know, I got the message, and I'm gonna get out of your hair now. And there doesn't need to be any bad feelings. We can pass in the street and say hello, or not. It's okay. P.S. I noticed your car was leaking, so I put some sealant in there. You might need to take it to the shop, though. Let me know if you want me to come with you, because sometimes these guys try to rip you off. If not, no big deal. Sam. Ah, I might have been okay without the P.S. part. But if someone's kind of like freaked out by you already, they don't really want another letter from you. But I get it, he wants to say sorry and kind of fix things. And I think he did, because by the end there, I mean by the end of, you know, he was still a good friend. The Crafty Goblin says loot. The Crafty Goblin's loot. That's from the princess and the two thieves. I drew the original. And I distinctly remember drawing that cake. Which is arguably the best part of that illustration. Alright, Picasso. Then you probably remember what the goblins stole in that story, huh? Uh... So, they drew the original. Did Marianne get it printed or what? Oh, and the engineering degree would explain why she was able to build all this stuff. Oh my god. Did she ever graduate properly? We don't really know. Uh, fruits, nuts, eggs. Spoons, plates, forks, knives, blankets. Some flour for the cake, maybe? Was flour one of those? Spoon is. What if they took some spoons? Maybe they took some of the princess's fruit? Eggs. I'm pretty sure they stole some eggs. Did they steal candy? No. Or not. Oh, no, no, not the spoon. Maybe not. What if they took some spoons? Actually, I'm not sure. That's it. Oh. I always wondered where that drawing went. She said it was her favorite, and then one day it just disappeared. You are the best mom in the world. The prettiest princess. I really don't think Marianne abuse them at all. Like maybe during the last few months when money was tight and then she wasn't taking her medication, things got really bad. But up until that point, it was probably like completely good. She seemed like a perfectly loving mom. I wish she just explained all this to us. Yeah, no kidding, man. Instead, she built this gigantic puzzle room, which is impressive in itself, but man. Wow. I guess we just leave these here? But who's our father? You really want to go? You sure we've seen everything? Well, you're making me doubt myself now. I guess we could stay a little longer if you think there's more to find. I wish you gave me that kind of prompt more often in the places where I could have missed stuff. But no, I mean, that's it. Leo. It's not important who Leo's father is, but who's our father? You really want to go? You sure we've seen everything? Either way, I'm ready for this to be over. Me too. The moment of truth. 
Hey, what about that tree photo that my mom included? Where is that anyway? Oh! This is the spot. I can't believe he's been down there this whole time. We... Oh... We played Compass and North Star here. I wish she would have just told us. It's hard for her to talk about too. I don't... No. I don't think this is something any parent wants to ever have to say or talk about. She tried to tell us. In her own Marianne kind of way. The stories. Yeah. What are you thinking? That we just found out we have a brother, and at the same time, that we'll never get to meet him. It's a lot to process. Poor Marianne. Come on. Let's keep going. We don't know what happened specifically. I thought the Tiara story might have been saying that it was a miscarriage, but obviously not. Time for us to figure out who Marianne was arguing with on the dock. Okay. Wow, Allison is the one leading us now. She's got so much more resolve. Good on you. Oh my god. You're joking. Tom? Tom Vecchi is our father? Of course. It had to be him. Tessa knew, didn't she? Yeah, she, she must have. That's what she didn't want to tell us. God, Marianne and Tom? I know. Ugh. Oh my god. What should we do now? Yeah, call him out here and make him tell us what was going on. And if he won't? We know his secret. He will. Tom? It's Allison. We need to talk. We know it was you. You know, I did see people say, hey, maybe it's Tom, but I never really considered it because... Feels like it would be an episode out of Jerry Springer or something. Oh my god. And he abandoned us all these years, even though we were right here. That's why Tessa and Marianne had an argument. That's why child services was called. Oh my god. Let me take the lead on this. I know him better. Yeah, I thought I did, anyway. Sure. Whatever. As long as we get answers. Kids, listen. You're our father. Never gave a shit about us. <sighs> yes. You knew how bad it got out here. How little we had. Why didn't you help Marianne? You mean all the money she wanted? Well, we didn't have anything to spare. Well, that winter was rough on everyone. And you would have starved out here if not for all the free food we gave you. Don't act like you had anything to do with that. That was all Tessa. That's a cruel presumption, young man. Well, maybe it was Tessa's idea initially. But I supported it. This guy's garbage. And your mother was happy to live off our handouts. Can we punch him, please? 
You did. You did. Okay, but let's talk about the present. You tried to burn down our barn and knocked Tyler unconscious. I never meant to hurt anybody. You weren't supposed to be home. Doesn't excuse the fact that you didn't even stop to help. What do you want me to say? I panicked. I was terrified that this whole thing was going to blow up in my face. I had to do something. Could have burnt it in all these ten years. Oh my god. Hey. You hearing me? Yep. Sorry. I'm trying really hard to keep myself from punching him in the face. He's not even the least bit sorry for what he did. He could have seriously hurt you. Piece of garbage. Yeah. He's just a fucking coward. Okay, yeah, now we know we never need to have a relationship with this guy. Eddie looks like a saint by comparison. So what do we do now? We tell him he's got to fix the mess he made. One way or another. You were here that night. You saw Marianne and Tyler. Why didn't you help? I know it wasn't my best moment. But she threatened my life. So you just decided to let her drown? I didn't decide anything. Yes, you did. Everything happened so fast, I panicked. And by the time I got to town, Brown was already on his way out. There was nothing else I could do. Oh my god, that's not true because remember, what killed Marianne wasn't the stabbing, it was the drowning. If you had gone and... Ugh. Okay, maybe it's a little bit too much to expect him to, you know, dive into the lake or whatever, but still... There had to have been more. Does he really expect us to believe there wasn't anything else he could have done that night? I don't know, Ellie. I'd rather not think about it. This piece of garbage. I don't even want anything from you. You failed us, Tom. You need to make it right. I'll do whatever you want. As long as none of this gets out. <sighs> Excuse me? You want me to pay for my mistakes? Fine. But please, Tessa can't know. This would kill her. Tessa already knows, Tom. No. That's... That's impossible. It never occurred to you the reason Tessa cut Marianne off was you? Uh, I... But she... She never said anything. Oh, Lord. You should try talking to your wife. Maybe if you had, we wouldn't be in this situation. And maybe Marianne wouldn't be dead. Oh, come on. You of all people should appreciate how troubled Marianne was. Appreciate? She was unhinged. Something like this would have happened sooner or later. Oh, my God. That was convenient for you, huh? You preyed on her because she was vulnerable. And you knew you could always blame it on crazy Marianne Ronan if you got caught. It was nothing like that. Nothing at all. Your mother was... a very pretty woman. Shut up! And she'd been so many places and done so many things. The way I always thought I would've. Shut up. I got caught up. Shut up. Love made me a fool. Shut up. Look, I made mistakes. But this will not go any further than the three of us. Why? We know. Tessa knows. Marianne's dead. There's no point in hiding it anymore. He's afraid it'll tank his campaign. Am I wrong? Jesus, Tom. I've kept your secret all these years. I don't want to go spilling it, but I will if I have to. What? Yeah. Your little story about self-defense. I've never told anyone how Marianne really died. That night, I came out here because I was worried about your mother.
What's she gonna do? This is his fault. This is his fault. Mm. Is she gonna go kill him? It's not really the Mad Hunter because it's someone from Delos Crossing. I'm not going to hurt you. Oh no. No! No way! You're a fucking liar! I saw what I saw. Ugh. You're manipulating us just like you manipulated her! Tyler! You're not listening to this, are you? Be smart about this, Allison. Are you sure you want this to get out? You've got way more here to lose than he does. Ah! His name will be all but clear, but you... You'll be a killer. What will your uncle say? And Michael? Hmm? Shut up. Well, the whole town might turn on you. Don't touch her. You know I'm right. Just get out of here, Tom. Tyler and I need to talk alone. Just please. Think twice before making any rash decisions. There are a whole lot of lives at stake here. And your campaign. Leave us the fuck alone. And never come back. This is gonna be a big decision. Whether it is or not, I already have my answer. Allie, you okay? He didn't let that asshole get to you, did you? Did you? What if he's right? I've been having all these nightmares about that night, and they were a lot like how Tom said. And now, when I try to remember, that's all I can see. He's trying to mess with your head, and you're letting it work. No, it's more than that. Ever since we started digging, I... I haven't been able to shake this feeling like something's off. Something's off because he put this in your head. Don't let him get away with it. He might not be lying. We, we, we keep getting things mixed up. We remember totally different versions of the past. Those are just details. This isn't that. She was going to kill me. I'm not so sure anymore, Tyler. Oh my god. So the contention lies with the I'm going to kill you versus I'm not going to hurt you. What did she really say?
she had a gun pointed at me. She chased me. She said she was going to kill me. She threatened Tom with those exact same words, with the same gun on the same pier. The thing you said to Eddie the other day got thrown back at me. Don't you think it's possible that happened here too? I guess it's possible. Oh my god. Fuck. I, I don't know. And we're never gonna know the truth, are we? Because the second you walk away from something, that's it. Yeah. I guess at this point, you just have to decide what you believe. Me? Yeah. You need to start dealing, Allie. And that means coming to terms with Whatever version of the past feels the most true to you, no more running. Whatever you choose, you gotta live with it, okay? Oh my god, please don't make me pick. There are no wrong choices, Allison says. Oh my god, you're joking. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm going to kill you! I'm going to kill you! Okay, what would be the consequences of us believing Tom's version? It's basically worst case scenario for Allison, right? Because now it's not gonna be self-defense. We stabbed our mom for no good reason. And maybe we were manic in that state or something. Oh. oh my god. Oh my god. This is an impossible choice. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm going to kill you. I think if we want to talk about dealing with a trauma. Okay, which version feels the most true to me? I don't know. I really don't know. There is a possibility that Tom is lying to us. And I also think about how, okay, my mom is holding a gun. And then she chased Tyler out of the barn. Did Tyler feel threatened when he saw Marianne with a gun? Because just because someone's holding a gun doesn't automatically mean they're threatening, right? But he ran, so he felt threatened. And from that perspective, I would be more inclined to think that Marianne threatened Tyler. I'm going to kill you! But you know what? I'm trying so hard to think about this logically right now, but it really is just like what Tyler and Allison say. I just gotta pick the one that feels most true to me, and it's not really to do with logic. No matter how much I try to think about this, we're never gonna know the truth. I just gotta pick what I believe. Oh, but even then, this is so difficult. <sighs> Earlier, I was saying, if we have a big choice coming up, I've made up my mind. And that was under the assumption that Tom's was going to be the correct one. If the choice was between exposing and not exposing Tom, I would choose to expose him, even at the risk of exposing myself. Because I think from the past bit, we already saw that Allison had so much pain dealing with keeping this whole thing a secret. So even if it came to me exposing myself as being the true killer, so to say, I would do it. Because we need to start living authentically and genuinely and all that. But that's not the choice they give me. That's not the choice they give me. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. Oh. Oh my god. I'm going to kill you. 
I'm thinking about how last time I was like, hey, I picked Allison's memory twice in a row already, so next time I don't want I don't want to pick that. But this is a big, big choice. Ah! Ah! What is most true? What is most true? What is most true? I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. You know, from Tom's perspective, if he's telling me the story, for him, the big thing that he has on me, that he can blackmail me with, is knowing that Allison was the one who did it, not Tyler. So, actually there's no reason for him to lie about this part. The, I'm not gonna hurt you versus, I'm gonna kill you. He might not even have known that's what we thought. I'm going to... I'm not gonna... To kill you! I'm going to kill you! Ah! I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm not gonna hurt you. Oh, please. No, don't do this. Allison. This isn't... What? She was going to kill herself. Just herself. You interrupted her and... We... We got confused. Are you sure? Yes. That attic... Tyler, that was meant for us. It was her way of, of explaining what she was going through. I made a horrible mistake. Hey, hey, it's okay. I'm here. Believing this version is more painful for Allison. Hey, peep what I just found downstairs. What do you think? Would have aged well, or just gone bad. <sighs> Where are you at right now? I just keep hearing her say she wasn't going to hurt you. Over and over. We were kids. We freaked out. You weren't equipped to deal with that shit. She was just talking to you. And I... I killed her. Stop. No, 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 it was a drowning. It was a drowning. And she was holding a gun, okay? I don't want to use our voice again. Ever. What? Seriously? I don't know. But I want to stop feeling like this. And I think we'll be better off without it. This morning, I kept getting these horrible visions. Of you and Marianne and Eddie. Visions? Like our memories? Yeah, but, but different. It was all my worst thoughts brought to life. You were in my bedroom saying I abandoned you. Eddie called me a snake. I'm sorry. I should have been there for you. It's okay. I was the one who walked out. I just... I can't let that happen again. I, I don't think it will. Something's been pushing us to find answers. And now we have them. 
Maybe I'm wrong. And if it stays bad, we can stop. But I really want to keep what makes us, us. The Mad Hunter was forced to remain below the lake with the Moon Hag, but she did not kill him, because even reduced to just one hand, he was too useful a servant. Lo, he plotted the day think? he would emerge Brothers and sisters. to once again hunt the wise princess and earn back his left hand. Always. And that is the story of how the crafty goblins rescued the wise princess from the Mad Hunter.